Hello and welcome. My name's Mark Cochram and I'm a bookbinder. Sometimes book artist as well, I guess. Um, my studio, Studio 5 Book Arts, is based in Barnes, which is in southwest London. And it's only a couple of stones throw away from the, the heart of the arts and craft movement. And of course, by that, I'd refer to Hammersmith. And just the other side of Hammersmith Bridge from me is, um, well, it's, the, it's the epicentre, if you like, where people like Sir Emery Walker, William Morris, and more importantly to bookbinding, perhaps book arts as well, Cobden Sanderson, worked, uh, lived, and did their thing. Now, I try and incorporate the ethos, or elements of the ethos of the arts and crafts movement within my bookbinding and book arts work. And I also try and encourage it in my teaching as well when I'm teaching students and, you know, wherever I am teaching, whether it be in the UK or further afield. And one of the first things I teach is a relatively straightforward book, which is called the Multisectional Flat Bank Case Binding. Just happen to have one here. This is a quarter cloth, and it basically means it has a cloth to the spine and a decorated paper to the front board. All the sections, those are the pages, it's all hand folded, hand sewn, and as much hand work is done as possible on this. Of course, I do use things like board choppers and that sort of thing. But, you know, I try and keep within the ethos of the arts and craft, even to the point of sort of, um, where are we? Yes, let's find it, where the edges are left untrimmed. And indeed, you know, we can still see elements of the tab and that sort of thing. And that's due to the folding and cutting process. Um, it's got a really nice living edge to the book. You know, it's not a machine-made, machine-cut thing. If I wanted um, a book to look like it was machine-made, I would buy a machine-made book. The beauty of being able to make something like this is that it's got the element of the maker's hand in it. It's, each book is unique. Now, this following video isn't going to be a sort of a, you know, how do I do it? It's more of a elements of the ethos of why I do things the way I do. Anyway, I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the video, and uh, thanks for watching. The paper I'm using to make this particular text block with is 130 GSM Stockwell cartridge paper. Once the sections have been folded, I need to press them. This will get rid of any um, trapped air and will consolidate all the folds. I'm going to be sewing five sections for this particular one.
Now that we've made the text block, we've done all the folding, the cutting, the sewing, uh, putting the various spine linings on, we can start to look at it and get a feel for the shape and the size of the book, and more importantly, the weight of it. It begins to have substance. It's important to know what your materials can and can't do, just as it's just as important, I guess, to know what yourself and I can do and what I cannot do. All the materials we've used so far have been very natural. Uh, we've used cotton, this is for the mulled spine lining, linen, thread and paper, which is cellulose fibre of course. We've also done a little bit of upcycling, we to use some um, old packing paper, some old craft paper, on the spine of the book. So now it opens, it articulates, all the pages hold together, we begin to get that essence of the movement of the book. And, you know, this is where I begin to really start seeing what the possibilities are and where we can go with it. As mentioned before, what I'm going to be making is a simple quarter cloth case binding, and this time I'll get it right. That means cloth to the spine area and a decorated paper to the front and back board. Got it right. So, let's get on with it. It pays to be as accurate as possible when cutting boards, and that fact's in many, many things. You know, a fraction of a millimetre can make the difference between the book being square and not being square. I decorate my own papers using a technique called flottage. Um, it extends my range of uh, materials available and, of course, makes my work always unique. I'm a great believer in that if you can buy it from a shop, so can somebody else. Okay, my bibliotic chums, uh, these are the ingredients for the binding, the case binding. What we've got here, we've got some book cloth, this is a tissue back book cloth. Pretty ordinary, pretty normal, I suppose. We've got our uh, two boards. We've got our spine piece, and of course we've got our decorative paper. The tools, well of course, tr the trusty bone folder, knife, tensile, straight edge of some section, and the adhesive I'm going to be using is a standard PVA, a uh, bookbinders PVA, I should, should say, universal standard bookbinders PVA. I'm going to be using a roller, and maybe using my brush as well, you never know. And I've got one of these lidded trays, really quite cool. Anyway, the way I work, let's get making. So the way I work generally is I get my book cloth on first, got more than two centimetre, both head and tail, just getting that down, getting the first one in, into the correct position. Smooth down, then through clean waste paper. Just rub down, make sure you've got full contact, and then a quick press. So now I've got my second board and my spine piece in place. Give those a quick rub down, make sure it's all consolidated, make sure everything's nice and beautiful. And again, just a quick rub down through clean waste paper. And again, a press. Once the uh, book cloth is on the spine area, it's now time for our decorative paper. And this is where things start getting, for me anyway, really quite, you know, exciting in a way. So that's just gone down. We're going to consolidate again with clean waste paper. Really giving it the onions now, really making sure that's going down. And again, I'm going to begin a sense of the balance of the colour of all these different things happening and coming together. Once again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim out as I'm working so I don't forget to do it. And it's all nice, slick, easy movements. There's nothing terribly complicated about this. It's all sort of, you know, sort of easy peasy, as was once said to me. And again, what I'm doing is I'm just making sure everything's nice and neat. 
working quickly, working with alacrity. So that's my front paper down. Looks quite jazzy, doesn't it? Care attention to detail all the time, making sure everything's going down nice and square where it should be, everything's beautiful. Let's get a little, show you a little trick with that soon where it hasn't gone down too well. Yeah, look, here we go. Really make sure that's gone down. Pay particular attention to the edges. Then we're going to be giving it a quick press very shortly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to <coughs> trim this one out. So nice even strokes with the knife. And if you have an errant piece that hasn't stuck down, look, we've just got that little corner there. Can you see that? The little corner there hasn't stuck down. So this is how you can get round. Here's a good little trick. Get a piece of waste paper, scrap piece of paper. Put a little bit of adhesive on one edge, one of the little edges like that. That's all there is to it. Underneath here. And then all you need to do is pop that underneath. Press down, slide out, and the adhesive will be where you want it to be. Simple. Now this needs to be pressed. Once the case has been sort of pressed, um, it's now time for the turn-in. Making sure that the paper is tight to the edge, of course, corners neatly done, Everything sort of consolidated using the old bone folder. And that, my bibliognotic chums, is the case finished. Now that the work on the case has been finished, all the turn-ins done, corners beautifully made and everything else, we can get an idea of how it's physically going to be looking, how the colours move across the board. You know, it's very modern, very contemporary in feel and look, but it still has that essence, that ethos of the arts and craft movement in that, you know, the hand is the main tool. It's the beauty of the handmade, the, the allure of the handmade. It, it, it's, it, it gives it very much a human ele um, element. And of course, it's unique as well. Now, all we have to do is marry our text block to our case, and that will be the book sort of finished as far as I'm concerned though of course it's what happens to the book after it leaves me a new life a new beginning welcome back my bibliotic chums now that the text block has been attached to the case we get an idea of the form and the function of the book how the case works how the decorative papers move from one board to the other how the edge of that text block that we took so great pains in folding and cutting by hand and sewing by hand of course really comes alive with the book. I really enjoy making books and I hope that this um, short video has given you an insight into how and sort of why I work. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Bye-bye.